everyone, it's the Notorious KIA. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome to the club. Get comfy. So as you guys can see by the title of this video, today I'm doing my updated nighttime routine. I get so many questions about my hair. I just think it's imperative for me to just keep these videos updated um, because products change, methods change. I just wanna make sure I'm giving you guys the most up-to-date information. Um, so today I'll be doing my summer 18 updated nighttime routine. So without further ado, let's hop right into it. So this is pretty much what my hair looks like after two days of doing absolutely nothing to it. I really wanted to show you guys the transformation that my hair takes um, and just like how drastic it can be. Like my hair is super kinky, it's dense. Um, the weather is really humid in New York, it's hot. So this is pretty much what my hair ends up being like. And I can always get it back to being just super moisturized and just bouncy. Um, yeah, all it takes is just moisture, to be honest. I typically do this method uh, two to three times a week. Um, so pretty much like every other night I try to, and I wash my hair weekly. Those are two questions that I get a lot, how often I wash my hair and how often do I restyle my hair. So in between the times that I restyle my hair, when I'm sleeping at night, I pretty much sleep in a pineapple. So just like this, um, I take my Versace 100% silk, scarf you know only the finest of fabrics can touch this hair okay pretty much it um, I also like to make sure I'm tucking my hair into the scarf because the AC if you sleep with the AC on is gonna dry your hair out so you want to keep your hair especially those ends protected so as mentioned this is how I sleep on the nights when I'm not restyling my hair so I'm not doing this method I put it in a pineapple and I sleep like this all right so let's 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 get funky all right, let's, like, we, we too cute right now. We are way too cute. Like, we gotta take these earrings off. Like, it's about to get real in here, all right? Like, I'm way too cute for this nice routine, all right? <laughs> let's take this out, you know. Give it a quick shake, girl. Shake it out. Um, I just take some water just to make it a little bit more pliable, you know, because she's stiff right now. She's not really moving how I need her to move, right? So this, you guys ask all the time about this mister. I'll leave a link in the description box where you can purchase either this one or something similar. You know, it's it's a mister. So instead of like a regular spray bottle spurting like that, this kind of like goes like this, you know? <laughs> Just a little bit of water. I also like to put um, like rosemary like a few drops of rosemary essential oil and um peppermint in my spray bottles um you know those two actually stimulate hair growth and i actually like the way it smells all right just right off the bat i just have to let you guys know that i hate that i have to say it but this video isn't sponsored um these are just products that i genuinely love at the moment and that i genuinely actually most definitely use um, <laughs> so I just wanted to throw that out there just in case you guys were wondering in case you think my opinion is biased based on whether it's sponsored or not nah. um, but this brand called Knox and I actually work with them for an in with an Instagram post and I've been using their products like consistently since I did the Instagram post and I absolutely love them they're like formulated for like thinning hair they have like different scalp treatments and all kind of stuff like naturally you know we're naturals um, and especially people with kinkier and denser and finer textures we're going to experience a lot more breakage a lot more shedding a lot more like just thinning especially along our hairline so we have to make sure that we're treating our hairline um we love our edges and some of us like myself i listen to a lot of beyonce so you know it's a lot of tension in this area so we have to make sure we're giving it that extra tender love and care um so lately like i said i've been using the nioxin products um the first one I like to put on my hairline is the scalp and hair treatment. Um, I just, just spray it like directly along there and then just massage that in really quickly. So once that's massaged in, I follow up with the, um, the Night Density Rescue and I pretty much take about a half a droplet and just run it along my hairline like that. 
Now you actually can use both products on your entire scalp, but I really like to focus the product on my thinning areas, which happens to be, you know, my hairline. And then they smell actually, this one smells really good. So I try to use these products every night, but if I don't get to use them every night, I most definitely use them when I'm restyling my hair because like any treatment, consistency is key. Um, so you're not gonna see results unless you're being consistent. Um, so they recommend daily use of those two products. So once that's completed, I then uh, section my hair off into four sections. So this next product is something that I don't use too often because it's hot. Uh, maybe once a week, but I really like to use it when like shrinkage really came from my life that day. Um, it really gives my hair a nice little stretch. Um, and that's the q -Redu, little mister thing. Um, it's okay, you don't really need it, to be honest. I hate that I have to refill this so many times. Um, but I also put a little bit of rosemary and peppermint essential oil in this as well. It's just very relaxing when you're doing your hair. Um, you know, doing your hair is self-care. That's how I look at it. If you look at it as being a chore, it's gonna be a chore. Um, but this is that 30 minutes out of your day that you get to dedicate to yourself. So, enjoy it. Just like, not really comb, just like, distribute some of that steam through my hair. So that's pretty much it. No major difference, um, but I just like that it stretches out my hair a little bit. It also opens the cuticle to allow, you know, all the moisture that I'm about to put in there to actually penetrate the hair shaft a little easier. Um, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, let's move on to styling products. So it's the summertime. Um, glycerin is honestly the devil for my hair, so I avoid it at all costs. Um, so I just pretty much use any twisting, curling cream that doesn't contain any glycerin. So lately I've been using the Mayel Organic Twisting Souffle. It's the pomegranate and honey one. Um, it smells amazing and it's like, girl, she's super thick. Thick, okay? Um, <laughs> so keep that in mind. I use a tiny bit and I apply it to the whole entire section. I find that it just goes a lot quicker and this process typically takes me about 20 minutes to do. Um, it's very like boom, boom, boom for me. Because it's so thick, I find that it doesn't distribute through my hair evenly. Um, so I just spray a little bit more water to help with that. And I love that this product says that it can be used on wet or dry hair. I don't think companies realize like how crucial it is to state that. Like I know a lot of them will say, you know, you know, use on towel dry hair, but they won't mention whether you can use it on like completely dry hair. Um, so I think that's really important. So that's one of the reason, main reasons why I gravitate towards this as far as like styling throughout the week because I know I can use it on dry hair. Um, so yeah. Oh, it smells so good, so good. After that, um, I apply some of this Aveda Anti-Humectant Pomade. Now girl, this is super, 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 super greasy. Um, so like literally a dime size amount, if that, for one section of hair. It's too much. Probably about that much, if you guys can see. You can't see. Um, that's how little I'm using. So I know someone's gonna ask, you know, do I seal with any oils or anything like that? No, not in the summer. I don't use any oils on my hair um, because I find that it makes my hair really, really greasy. Like as soon as that humidity comes, girl, she's attacking whatever oils. Like, and they're having a battle. And my hair is just so frizzy, so greasy, and so limp. So I avoid all natural oils. So this does contain silicone, and I find that any anytime you wanna combat frizz, you have to use some silicone. Y'all just have to get over it, or you're just gonna welcome frizz. Like, but at the end of the day, frizz is gonna happen. But we, you can tame her a tiny bit with some anti-humectant stuff, some anti-frizz stuff, some hairspray, whatever. You can tame her a little, but she's gonna come She's gonna come out to play, like she wants to play. Um, that's what she does. Once that's in, that's pretty much all the products I'm gonna use on my hair at this point. Then, I section about a third of that section. So about that much. And then I just like lightly finger detangle and 
and then I just begin twisting. And then I take a little bit of more water at the ends to kind of like help it just seal it and lay a little better. That's pretty much it. I find that if I don't spray the ends with water, it just unravels. So you're pretty much gonna repeat the same steps for the rest of this section. So I told you guys on Instagram to send me any of your hair related questions. And another question that I get a lot is, how often do I trim and who trims it? So I trim my hair probably twice a year or every six months and I go to get it professionally done. Um, I just don't trust myself, but if you feel like you're good, with you trust yourself, go for it. Um, but it's pretty much like when you see fit. Like I don't feel like I need my hair trimmed no more than twice a year because I don't straighten it. Um, and I try to keep my ends together, but you know your ends, they do the most. Okay, so once I'm done with all the twists, I pretty much do three twists per section. I think I get up to like maybe four up here sometimes. Um, I then take a white perm rod and starting at the ends, I roll and then I begin rolling up my hair like that. So we're here with it. We roll up the ends and then we wrap, roll and wrap. So that's pretty much it and you wanna repeat the same steps for the remaining sections of hair. So while I finish the rest of the sections, I wanna um, answer some of the questions that you guys have asked me, hair related and also life related as well. So first up we have Simone and she asks, natural hair can be so much sometimes, how do you make sure you don't let it control your life? Um, I would say come up with a schedule, something that works for you for the time that you're gonna dedicate to doing your hair. Whether it's daily, whether it's weekly for wash day. I know Sundays work for a lot of people, so just tell yourself, Sundays is the day I dedicate to wash day, to doing my hair and just stick to it. This way you don't feel over overwhelmed. You have a schedule that you're gonna stick with um, and hopefully it'll just make you know better use of your time because Time is a luxury and it's it's precious and we don't get that time back. Um, so we wanna make sure that we're being very efficient with our time. Um, and sometimes hair gets in the way. Like I always say, doing your hair is self-care. You should look at it as self-care. It's time for yourself, that 30 minutes, however much it takes, out of your day where you can strictly dedicate it to yourself. So you also wanna incorporate like your hair routine into daily tasks you already do. So like deep condition while you study or restyle your hair while you watch your favorite you know, TV show or in between like playing a board game with your kids or something like that. Like incorporate it into things you already do so it's, it doesn't seem like you're, you're spending so much time doing your hair. Let's get into my life. So I wanted to really give you guys a life update and I felt like this was like the perfect time um, I'm doing an updated hair routine, answering some hair questions, and you know I can give you guys a quick little update on my life. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, if you don't, I highly suggest that you do. I post pretty much once a day on my stories and also on my feed. Um, so if you're missing me, come on over to Instagram. <laughs> um, but anyway, so earlier this year, I had an amazing opportunity with Diva Curl. Um, I work with them on their Wash Day Wonder campaign. I did a photo shoot with them and I ended up in Sephora. Like that's so crazy. Um, so yeah, that was like so real. Like first of all, seeing my face in Sephora, like real girl, like I started from the bottom now. We are here, okay? Just take my face out of it. But just seeing this hair, this just tightly coiled, kinky hair on display in Sephora is just monumental. And y'all might be saying, it's just hair, but how many people is gonna walk by this image? You know, representation really matters, and if you don't see something, you don't know it exists. So yeah, it's, it's like representation, like, you know, you see it and you, you believe it. 
Um, there's so many women that, you know, stop me on the street or, you know, send me DMs like, you know, it's, you know, you have, we have similar hair textures and I started embracing my hair because of your big curly hair and I just love it and I just love how confident you are and you just empowered me and like that's honestly why I do what I do you know um, I want to empower you guys I want to show you guys that if I can do it you can do it and you can be better at whatever it is um, that if I'm confident and I could get over the hurdles as far as hair is concerned the hurdles as far as just being an introvert and putting myself out there on the internet like you can too like what is fear Fear is, is created to hold you back, and that's it. I was just like, the little girl that's gonna see this and just know it's okay, like her hair is beautiful. Um, it was just, it was bigger than me. It was so much bigger than me, and then people sending me the pictures and the videos of them seeing it in Sephora. Um, it just made my heart smile. Um, so that was really great. That, that was an amazing experience. So when I say I do it for the culture, that's exactly what I mean. Um, I just want to empower you guys. And I know some people are like, it's not that serious, it's just hair, but you know, to you, to you, it's not that serious. But to many people out there, it is. Hair is how, is a way to discriminate. Hair for the longest was a way to tell, back in like slavery or segregation, hair was a way people could pass for white. It was survival. Hair has always been about survival, I think. We started perming our hair. That was survival. It was whether, you know, you were going to get a job or not. <laughs> you know, the closer to whiteness you are, whether it was back then or even now, the more privilege you have. And hair is one of the main indicators. Um, so, yeah, it's not just hair. And I hate when people say it's just hair. I mean, you can trivialize it and make it, diminish it to something like that. But history tells a different story. Um, so yeah, <laughs> just to switch paces a little bit, we're back to hair. Um, I mean, we never really left hair, but back to just styling the hair. So I never used to do this in the past, um, and that was create a zigzag part once I got to the front. I find that this is crucial because when you're trying to fluff out your hair, that middle part girl, she wants to show face. She wants to say she has arrived and she wants to be front and center and present. And she's not gonna go anywhere. So if you create a little zigzag part, it actually allows your hair to lay a lot better. Alrighty, so um, next up, I'm gonna talk about quitting my job. <laughs> um, the last time we spoke, I did a QA and a and um, I was telling you guys that I was transitioning out of my job and I was currently working from home. Well now, I'm completely done. Tomorrow will actually make it one month since I quit my job, like yay. <laughs> and it was honestly like the, the best decision I could have ever made, um, just for my mental health, just for my career, just in general. Uh, life is just entirely way too short for you to be in situations that aren't fulfilling, that don't bring you joy, that you're miserable in. And this is relationships, jobs, whatever. Um, we should all be striving to live the most happy, the most enjoyable and fulfilling life possible. Um, and I know that's not always the case, but we always always must like evaluate what in our life is not fulfilling us. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be draining. It's just like why? Like I mentioned earlier, time is precious. Time is a luxury. Uh, we shouldn't be doing things that don't fulfill us or just because or doing it because. If it doesn't invoke a feeling, um, then why are you doing it? Like contentment is the devil. <laughs> uh, so yeah, just like evaluate your life, figure out like what, what's not bringing you joy, like and get that back, get that time back, replace it with something else that's gonna be fulfilling. Just to give you guys my little backstory, um, I was at my job for maybe four years and I would say the last year was probably hell. Like I was literally miserable, miserable, I felt um, at that time, they let go a co-worker and I ended up taking on her duties. Um, so I was doing two jobs with no additional pay. And sometimes the money isn't everything or whatever, but I really felt undervalued, underappreciated. Um, and I wasn't about to be like giving all my time and effort to somebody else's dream um, when I wasn't really giving 100% to my own. Um, at this time, you know, I still had this platform. I still was creating content. I wasn't doing it 
you know, as much as I wanted to, but you know, I was here. And my job at the time allowed me the freedom to be able to do what I do. Um, it funded my passion, it funded my creative endeavors. Um, so it served a purpose. Once it stopped serving that purpose, that's when I knew it was time to go. Once um, I was taking time off from work just to create content, I knew it was time to go and I started, you know, thinking about my exit strategy. I would never tell you guys to make rash decisions and just up and quit your job because at the end of the day, bills are still due. Sally Mae, she wants her coins, okay? <laughs> so that would be completely irresponsible on my part, completely irresponsible on your part to just like jump out the window like that. Um, so I would never tell you guys to do that, but you honestly must have a plan. Um, so for me, my plan was, was just to up my content, create more content, get bigger, better brand deals. Um, I got a manager because I knew um, where I wanted to go and where I wanted to be. I needed a manager to accomplish that. So that was the first thing on my list as far as, you know, creating my exit strategy. It was just like, I'm going to get a manager. So the more time I have to create content, the better my content will be. And got the manager. Cool. Better brand deals. Bigger brand deals. I started turning down things so then better things can come around. Um, so my advice to anybody out there that is looking to quit their job, whether it's to you know find new employment or to just be an entrepreneur, is to have a game plan. So last summer, summer 2017, I told myself at the end of this year, <laughs> I'm gonna be done. I'm gonna be done. At this point, I didn't know how I was gonna be done, but I just knew I was going to be done. Um, because I, I feel like I was still like pretty much living paycheck to paycheck at this point. Um, not paycheck to paycheck, but I really didn't have much of a savings. Um, yeah, like I was just spending money very freely as it came in. It was just gone. Um, so I told myself I would start saving money. That was a part of the plan. I had a number and I was like, once I hit this number, like I'm going to be done. Like, I knew it was time because every day I would walk into work and be like, yo, today is the day I'm going to quit. <laughs> I mean, and obviously I, it didn't happen. Like I couldn't do it because that would have been irresponsible. I had, like I said, I had no savings, nothing to fall back on. So I was just like, yeah, be responsible. Just put a game plan in plan. Could put a game plan in motion. Uh, and I just up my content and just focus every single day. Um, I just put it out there, like what I wanted to do, where I wanted to be. Um, it was the first thing I thought about when I woke up and the last thing I thought about before I um, went to sleep. I prayed about it for four years. I always wanted to be in a position where I could create full time um, because that's, that's just who I am. Okay, because I'm going to do that anyway, all right? <laughs> and I never want to feel like I'm doing something for money and money only. And it doesn't bring any enjoyment to me. So yeah, I would come in and be super miserable, right? And I would just be hoping that they would they would fire me. Like, just please just fire me. Fire me, fire me, fire me. And I just knew, like, I knew it wasn't gonna happen. And then I also knew why. I want this to be a decision I choose and make on my own. I want to control my future. I don't want this job to control my future. I wanna leave on my free will because I want to, not because I was forced out. Now this situation happened to me years prior um, I was laid off from a job. I was still doing YouTube, it was like early in, in the days when I used to do it, um, like pretty much like when I was super consistent. Pretty much the time where I gained my following was during this time. Um, so I was laid off, you know, obviously that was a, a blow to my pride. So that was something that I didn't want to repeat. I know, I know how I felt at that moment being laid off. I felt like I wasn't good enough. I felt, you know, you start questioning yourself, you have self doubt. And that's all negativity. I didn't want that in this situation. I wanted to leave on my own free will, you know, just take that leap of faith and just, you know, God got me, right? And that's just all about trusting your instinct, trusting God, having that belief and that faith. Um, but at the same time, save your money, okay? <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So once I'm done with my hair, I then take some hairspray. First, I start by using the um, Instant Freeze Aussie hairspray because I didn't really use anything with any holes in it and I really like this stuff because it doesn't make my hair 
hard and crunchy, but it does contain silicone and stuff like that. So if you guys aren't a fan, then just skip over this part. That, and then I follow up with the Mazzani HRM, which is a humidity resistance mist. This doesn't really have much holes in it, but it helps with the humidity and combat a little bit of frizz. Put that on there as well. Right, and then of course, I have to take my 100% <laughs> silk scarf, satin works, but keep in mind like those um, scarves that you find at the beauty supply store, they're satin light, but they're not satin. They're most likely polyester. And they could be drying your hair out a bit, especially those bonnets. The slap cap, I stand by and 100% satin and 100% silk fabrics are the only things that are touching my hair, like hands down. Um, it's just a process of elimination. Somebody um, asked me, well, they wanted advice because their hair is always dry. Like no matter what they do, their hair is always dry. Um, so I would start with something as simple as what are you sleeping on? Um, Cause that could just be just sucking the moisture right out of your hair and you won't even know it. Also, your deep conditioner, that's what, the deep conditioner is for it's for moisture like that moisture you get from your deep conditioner is supposed to last you to the next time you wash your hair so start by looking at your deep conditioner is it moisturizer does it contain moisturizing ingredient does it start swapping out see if it, it helps also your leave-in conditioner is supposed to do this as well um, you shouldn't have to apply leave-in conditioner every time you do your hair as you can see I didn't use any leave-in conditioner I just used a styling product um, so make sure you're using a, a good leave-in conditioner as well. So start with those three things, deep conditioner, leave-in, and what you're sleeping um, in at night and see if that helps you. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna allow my hair to dry for about at least six hours I give for it to set. Like she has to be like this, ready. All right guys, so I'm back for the takedown. It's been about 12 hours, yeah. <laughs> Remove the silk, all right. And then I take a tad bit more of the pomade um, just to assist with unraveling, just a tiny bit. Put on my hands, put it my hair. Um, so this style for me has never been about like definition or anything like that. It's just like the easiest way for me to get like my signature fro. For me, it's all about volume. Um, a few of you guys hit me up and just let me know you tried this method and it doesn't really work for you. Um, you don't know what to do. Uh, it's not really laying how you want it to lay. Well, first things first, like my hair is cut in this shape. So I can do nothing to it and I'll still have this shape. So first things first, you probably need to go get a trim or a cut if you haven't had one um, in a while. Um, and that just makes life a whole lot easier. You don't have to keep touching your hair and try to get it to like do things it doesn't want to do. Just get it cut. Like it's just hair and it'll just grow back so nicely. Um, for me, the back of my hair is a looser texture than the rest of it. So it has a tendency to get like this mullet thing. So I always make sure I keep um, the back shorter than the front. So that's how you get like a nice heart shape. Um, so yeah, start out with the trim and or a cut and if that's not working for you then you probably have to evaluate the products that you're using everything that works for me is not necessarily going to work for you because we have low porosity hair we have high porosity hair we have hair that's denser than others we have coarser hair my hair is fine um curl pattern doesn't really matter um it's just about volume and density so if your hair is not as dense as mine you might not get as much volume as i get um definitely keep that in mind so now we come to the fun part grab your pick and just like pick it out 
pick out those parts first. And at this point I pick, like separate further, get volume and also to like shape it out some more as well. And for those who's gonna ask, I did, um, I do dye my hair black. So that's why it's like super dark, which I love, especially in the summertime when that sun hits it, girl. Oh, love, love, love jet black hair. Um, I'll be sure to leave like my stylist. I use two of them here in New York City. They're like the best. Um, the only people I let touch my hair pretty much or cut my hair, I would say. Um, I'll leave both of them in the description box so you guys can check them out. So you pretty much want to just keep playing with it until you get your desired shape. See, I like that I can um, have a part in the center and it just lays and I have a nice bang or I can completely just eliminate that part and have it here. But if it wanted to part throughout the day, it's not going to look, look bad because that's the cut that I have with the bangs. But you see how that zigzag part just completely eliminated that middle part mess? I would spend like 10 minutes out of my day trying to get rid of that part. And I probably was just causing so much unnecessary just manipulation. I would also put like a clip there and more times than not, I would end up leaving the clip here. I would leave the house, nobody would tell me. <laughs> I remember one time I filmed a video with the clip still here. Uh, so that is the exact part, just completely eliminates that. Like what was I doing before? Who knows? So that completes this video guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you're not subscribed to my channel, like what are you doing with your life? Hit that button, like come on over, we're nice. We have a good time over here. We're very unapologetic um, and you know, we make things happen, okay? So if you bought that life, hit that subscribe button. Uh, be sure to check the description box for all the links to the products I used in this video. And that's pretty much it guys. Thank you again and I'll see you in my next video. So until next time, peace and dopeness.